when it comes to aging, we can either slow and delay aging, or we can rejuvenate. Once aging has already occurred, how do we reverse some of the effects of aging? Um, what do you think about ketosis for that? Because I think in a lot of the caloric restriction and even in the ketogenic diet research, it's um, implemented midlife. So for people who are interested in slowing aging and delaying it, do you think that starting a ketogenic diet too early? Because I'm 25 and I've been following a ketogenic diet for about two years. I exercise frequently. I intermittent fast. I do a lot of these practices based on all of this research around longevity. But, but when you actually look at the research, it, all, it is all implemented midlife in these animal models. So what do you think about implementing it before midlife? And do you think it matters if we're doing it too early? Is there such thing as too early? Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? My first response, I think, is is it too, can there be a time too early? Absolutely. Uh, there is uh, you know, strong evidence that none of these interventions, modifications should be implemented in people who are not, who have not fully grown, that probably would be about your know, age, around 25. Um, there is also, if you think about the aging field, there is a concern uh, about interventions that you're going to be conducting your whole life, um, especially those that in, include a drug. And I, I'm very conservative in this regard. You know, when people ask me, you know, at 30 years old, should I take metformin? Um, I would really think, you know, twice about taking a, a drug when you're 30 year old, knowing you're going to have to take it for your whole life, uh, and because the longer you take any drug, the more you're likely to see side effects and the aging field might seem easy from the outside, but uh, from experience, we've learned that, uh, you know, there are, there's always a downside to everything, including, including all of these intervention in aging. So if someone tells you, you know, they have some magical pill that will delay aging and have no side effects, I would say, uh, take this with, with a grain of salt. Now, when when should you actually do this? I believe that there are two two answers to this. One, I think having a healthy lifestyle, decreasing your carbohydrate intake, having intermittent ketosis, fasting, exercising, sleeping, having low stress, I think should be part of life hygiene, uh, sort of for everyone. And and I would predict that the, the sooner you start when you uh, are an adult, uh, the better off you'll be in the future. Uh, but we also know that um, from animal models that many of the aging intervention, especially when we look to reverse aging and we have we're testing drugs and interventions that are more aggressive, um, such as rapamycin or metformin, uh, we know that we can start these interventions quite late in the aging process, and which is really good news because it means, uh, you know, if you want to mitigate the risk uh, in terms of exposing someone to a drug, uh, we know rapamycin is one, for example, even when mice were the equivalent of 60 years old, you could still see uh, close to a 20% uh, life, lifespan extension. So that's remarkably good news. And I would say until we know more, I urge caution uh, from, um, from people who are considering you know, aggressively uh, jumping into interventions, um, know what you're getting into, um, understand that this is an emerging field. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And that we still have a lot to learn. And, uh, and in the meantime, until we know how to administer these drugs, with what frequency, at what age, for how long, at what dose, and so on, I would say there is a lot that can be done today in terms of lifestyle and, and focusing on exercise, sleep, nutrition, uh, nutrition and, uh, and stress that will actually carry an enormous effect in terms of life expectancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And you mentioned intermittent ketosis, and that's kind of the way I look at the more practical approach to a ketogenic diet. Because I know even me, who's I'm very cognizant of carbohydrates, where they are in foods, um, and I will kick myself out of ketosis by accident by overeating vegetables and things like that. Yes. I know that I am going into periods and kicking myself out of ketosis. So I wouldn't say I'm chronically in ketosis, but yeah, I think that intermittent ketosis is a very practical approach for many people because you can just achieve that pretty easily with, well, easy to me now, I view like a 24 hour fast as pretty uh, practical and easy. Maybe to someone else who has not gone a day without eating would think that's not practical, but it could be a very common approach 
for people to implement periodically just to give their body a break. And I think that and Dom always puts it that uh, people argue that ketosis might be unnatural, but not going into ketosis might be more unnatural. So it is these periods of intermittent ketosis, whether that be fasting, whether that be a ketogenic diet, or whether it just be a calorie restricted, low calorie diet, which I guess would be ketogenic by nature. Um, but yeah, I think that those, there are a lot of practical strategies and exercise obviously being a very crucial um, strategy that we can implement into our daily routines that are very protective uh, against sarcopenia, bone loss, brain health, everything. I yes. think that exercise might be the most important. Of all. I think it is. I think it is and probably close to sleep. Um, mm, yeah. Uh, and, and probably the least important thing is what everybody is focusing on is whether you should be on a low carbohydrate versus a low fat versus a low protein diet is, you know, every one of the diets that we hear about which actually serve into a good purpose in terms of helping people to lose weight actually are missing the point in terms of how, how we should eat. To me, I, I always tell people like not too much focusing on what you're eating, but more on how you're eating. And in this respect, you know, allowing your body periods of rest. I love the work of uh, Sachin Panda on, on time restricted feeding, because I think it, there's, it, it's clear that we have not evolved in a, in a world of complete food abundance so that we have so many built-in protective mechanism to allow us to survive in the absence of food uh, that we've forgotten to, uh, you know, how to survive without food. And I think uh, you mentioned that it's easy for you to, to go on a 24 hour fast. This might seem like a insurmountable effort for a number of people because their body has forgotten. And it is amazing, uh, you know, from personal experience, how you can train yourself uh, by increasing the length of your fasting period and how quickly you are able to fast 24 hours and to actually feel wonderful. To be honest, uh, my, my fasting days are, are some of my most productive and, and happy days in the week, which seems, seems hard for people to understand, but that's, that's, that's what happens when you train yourself, just like exercising. Right. And when you combine it with a low carbohydrate diet, it is kind of crazy how your appetite is completely regulated. It's yes. intuitive eating becomes actually intuitive versus what people think intuitive eating is. Um, like you, I've never experienced being like starving or hungry, like so hungry that I'm going to faint or something. Whereas I used mm -hmm. to experience that, but now I'm to the point where I'm like, okay, if I find food that I can eat or I'm comfortable eating, that's fine. If not, then I go on with my day. Um, so it is yeah. interesting once you transition into a very metabolically flexible state that your hunger seems to be complete, you're in control. And I think that that's a, a scary place for people to live when food is controlling their behavior versus being in control of your appetite. Um, and it would be really awesome if everyone could experience that because I think it would be very liberating for a lot of people. I agree. I agree. <laughs>